A young blue-haired girl wakes up in her messy room. As she yawns over to her mirror, her eyes widen followed by a scream questioning who is that. Turns out a 17-year-old boy, Luo Yukin, has transformed into a girl overnight. Panicking about angering a ghost or it being some kind of drama trope, he analyzes himself and pinches himself in hopes of it being a dream, but it isn't. Poor boy did not even get a chance to date a girl before becoming one. His first concern is not letting one person know about it. Whom, the one knocking on his door in the same instant, was his very own sister, Luo Si. She knocks on the door, wanting him down for the breakfast. She made while Luo Yushen decides it's better to hide this from his sister. After knocking for a good amount of time, she decides to knock the door off only to find a girl instead of her brother inside the room. The cherry on top, Yushen wore a girl's uniform that God knows why exists in his drawer. Yu Chen introduces himself as Lin Ruoyo, his friend. He tells her cheekily that Yu Chen has left and she doesn't need to look for him. He then leaves before his sister can interrogate his girl self anymore. Even though his sister finds it weird, her more important concern is Yu Chen leaving without eating the breakfast she made. Walking to school as Ruoyo is a straight up attention grabber for Yu Chen. He walks through feeling uncomfortable by the gazes of all the guys when a guy, Renja, approaches her acting all cool, asking her to let him have the pleasure of being with him. He expresses his love for Royo, confusing him. Yu Chen starts scolding Renja for expressing his feelings for someone whom he hasn't even met before. As Yu Chen leaves, Renja is satisfied that at least he was scolded by a cute girl. Ishu shows his friend some inappropriate pictures from a place he went to and offers to tag along the next time. The boy seems excited, but none of their attentions shift when Ruoyu Oyo enters the class. Yushin thinks to himself about leaving the place as soon as possible to avoid the crowd of boys surrounding her. He sits behind Exu, who turns to her, already ready to have long private conversations with her. Ruayo is about to politely reject his offer when all the guys in the class surround her using different excuses to talk to her. This crowd pushes Exu mercilessly away from his seat. He shouts at everyone to not overpower a weak girl like her and to have some chivalry. At his speech, everyone scatters away, leaving Exu to get on one knee and ask Ruyo to accept his love. The class starts mocking him for being a hypocrite but he calls them out for using excuses while he is simply putting to words what he has in mind. He is an honest being who expresses his greed in himself. It's not something to brag about, but Xu seems pretty proud of himself at that. Yu Chen wonders where the chivalry he was talking about is. The commotion is disturbed when the class monitor appears questioning Ru Wayo who she is. She tells her she is there on behalf of Yu Chen to ask for his leave. Zhu is interested in how close she is to Yu Chen, so Ruoyo coldly tells him they are just friends. The class monitor tells Ruoyo to talk to the staff herself as the word of a friend has to be told directly. After a great deal of drama in just a little time as Ruoyo in this school, Yu Chen sighs ready to finally leave. Yu Chen is frustrated while walking back wondering why the dean would need to talk to parents over one absence. He is glad that his mother is abroad and cannot be contacted or else she would have rushed home hearing about Royo, assuming she is his girlfriend. Feeling tired out of nowhere, Yu Chen worries if he has to adapt to living like this forever. He dramatically apologizes to his mother and father for turning out this way when he suddenly notices the area he walked into. Yu Chen panics a little for mindlessly walking into the abandoned street known for shady business happening around. His fear turns alive when a bunch of men question what she is doing there. Yu Chen tries to tell them that he accidentally walked there, but the men are ready to tell the fact that this girl intentionally walked into this shady street to have some fun. As she tries to defend herself, one of the goons hits her and tries to convince her into giving in to them. Wanting to get out of this, Yu can knees him, but surprisingly, that hit is so strong that he spins and falls off far away. This scares the other two men who start apologizing to her while Yu Chen himself wonders when he gets so strong. He uses this opportunity to tell them to go away so they pick up their passed out boss and leave. Yu Chen wonders how he got this amazing strength, knowing it probably is from this transformation. He decides to test it on the wall. He decides to punch with all his might, but during the swinging of his arm, he transforms back to his boy self. Well, that hit would have hurt pretty bad.
Yu Chen wonders if his transformation is linked to a time or something else, but then his focus shifts to the fact that he cannot be seen wearing a girl's uniform if he doesn't want to scar his social life. Out of all the people in the universe, he calls X Yu to help him. Zhu Yu tells him no and hangs up on him. Yu Chen calls him again, telling him to bring him a men's uniform in the alley in 30 minutes if he does not want anyone to know that he snuck into a girl's middle school last week. Seems like Yu Chen has a bunch of blackmail up his sleeve to use Exu. 20 minutes later, Zhu approaches him out of breath. Yu Chen mocks him for not being able to run 5 kilometers in 20 minutes without being tired, getting a retort about not being able to do so either. Zhu asks him to get help from his girlfriend later and then shifts his focus to the interesting part, plus a cross-dressed Yu Chen. He jokes if Yu Chen has discovered something new within himself since he is cross-dressing in a secluded alley. Xu even tries to capture his picture, suggesting he earn some money by complimenting the girl's look with other necessities. Yu Chen warns him to stop if he does not want to get expelled for a week or month as he carries sufficient evidence for that. Xu tells him he can have some good fun posting this picture on the school website, but it could only happen if Yu Chen wasn't well aware of every creepy thing Zhu is into such as having some secret cameras placed at certain spots. Zhu walks away leisurely telling him to let it pass this time while Yu Chen glares at his retreating. Yu Chen changed his clothes and sat back to digest the chaos for a moment. He then thinks about how Zhu gets on his nerves, sometimes simultaneously hoping Zhu does not go around telling people that Lin Ruoyo is his girlfriend. That mess would be hard to deal with. He smirks thinking about taking Zhu down with him if anything stupid happens. Yu Chen enters the house and takes off his shoes only to get slammed down to the ground by Luo Gai. She sits on him, threateningly questioning who that girl is. Yu Chen is confused for a moment making Luo Zi warn him not to mess around and lie to him. He then recalls the morning incident and tells her that he was supposed to meet Ruoyo, but forgot to do so and already apologized about it. This turns out to be her weird big brother complex when she mentions being scared that some other girl will steal her brother away. Yushin consoles her that he won't lie to her. She then jokingly says she will be mad if he brings another girl home. Talk about being a weird little sister. Yushin is taking a nap in his room when a blue light and butterflies appear around his chest and a Tinkerbell-sized girl appears from inside him. She looks at the sleeping Yu Chen, wondering if he is the person who hosts her powers. What's a better way to show your presence than slapping the other person out of sleep? Yu Chen wakes up with a jolt and sees her standing on his bed. From his point of view, it looks like a doll making him wonder if Luo Ashi is playing a prank on him. He then touches the doll and is surprised to find the skin soft. He wonders if people have started manufacturing these realistic dolls lately. What he feels to see is the dead look this so-called doll is giving him. She threateningly questions if Yu Chen has a death wish. He jumps down the bed and crawls over to the corner scared of the talking doll. The girl, however, seems to be more offended as if she didn't just intrude on his personal space. She talks about humans being immoral and mannerless and introduces herself as Karen. She tells him that she will be answering all the questions he might have only if she finds them appropriate enough to be answered. Karen seems to be talking a little too royally. After collecting himself, Yu Shen thinks her answering questions must be linked to his transformation, so he asks if she has something to do with it. Karen sits on the bed, classily ready to explain the situation that he is her vessel and she has been dormant inside of him all these years. But now as she has woken up, all the power within him needs to be used up during the day. If not then, it corrupts him into becoming a girl. If things don't work out well, he will need to maintain that facade forever. It is not as casual for him as she mentions it to be. So fairly, a reaction comes out of Yushin. He grabs Karen and starts shaking her panicking and questioning how this could be dealt with as he does not want to become a girl. Karen slaps him to free herself, calling him rude as if she's not being arrogant and disturbing his simple life. The poor guy lies there distressed and almost crying. She tells him there lies hope, as long as he cooperates with her. Yuchin agrees readily. She tells him that she has left a power source in some ancient ruins, and if she manages to get her hands on that, she won't be needing his body as a vessel anymore, and he can be free from her. Yu Chen is relieved to hear that and is ready to go where these ancient ruins are located and get over this issue. 
the one tiny detail that was left is bombarded on Yu Chain in response. She has forgotten where the ruins are. Before he can freak out more, she tells him that since she has woken up in this world, soon enough the ruins will appear too. Since then, they will have to continue with his random transformations. She tells him she will try to limit her power as much as possible, but he will need to spend a good amount of day as Ruoyo. Luo Wauzi peeks into his room, surprising him. She asks who he has been talking to and what girl he was mentioning. Yukin panics but makes up a lie that he was talking to Exu who has been mentioning the storyline and characters of this game. She looks around, not very sneakily, checking if he is hiding a girl in his room. He tells her he won't do something immoral, wanting to make her leave. Luo Exi closes the door after telling him to come down for dinner soon. Yuchin sighs while Luo Xie six to the other side of the door after closing it. Yuchin talks on his phone to Exu about Luo Xie coming, so he needs to hang up now. He then warns Exu to not flirt with his sister. Luo Axi leaves with a sigh after hearing the conversation. Yu Chen finally relaxes after being sure that he is not being spied upon. He then shifts his focus back to Karen, asking how long can he keep his boy appearance. Karen tells him she can suppress her powers for at least three hours after which she needs time to recover. She also offers him to spend most of the time as Ruoyo and collect the time so he can use it tomorrow and get more hours as a boy outside. Yushin finds it a better option and decides to go for it, knowing he still needs to spend the rest of the time in his room. The next day, Yushin wakes up as a girl and takes a moment to be impressed that he has turned into a pretty girl. Karen tells him to get ready as she is going to suppress her powers now. He gets ready and asks how long she can manage it. He gets four hours to wander as himself. The moment he steps out of his house door, he is a boy again and he walks to school in peace. His peace, however, is short-lived since Exu did what he is a master at, create chaos. Well, other than being a creep, the whole class is enraged at Yushin because Yi told them Ruoyo was his girlfriend. Zhu tells him to be nice and apologize to everyone including Exu, but Yu Chen closes the door and figures out what to do. Everyone chases him as he rushes down the corridors. Reaching a dead end, he is confused about how to escape, so he decides to jump out the window. In the middle of his jump, Karen appears, and he transforms into Ruyo when Shu and their crazy classmates look out the window. They don't find him anywhere. Each in size while hiding at the side of the building in his Ruyo form. Su is confused at the disappearance of Yuchen, but retreats with his fellows. On the other hand, Yu Chen keeps throwing curses at Xu for messing with him and decides to get revenge on him. Karen tells him to worry about himself now. Since she released the power, she was holding in advance, he now has to wait for at least an hour till she can suppress it again. Yu Chen is a little worried and asks if he should skip the morning classes, but Karen seems not to care about that. An hour later, Ju was busy having his lunch when his noodles fell a little too spicy. He starts cursing around threatening the one who tried to play games with him. Yu Chen walks calmly and sits opposite him asking how noodles feel with red pepper. Zhu gets up and is walking away when Yu Shen mentions something about a coffee shop on Binjiang Avenue. This halts Xu in shock and he walks back telling Yu Ken he was not involved in the agenda of the morning. He had no choice but to support others. Yu Chen knows he is lying since it was pretty evident who was leading it all. Shu decides to use something else now. He tells Yushin that the festivals and school activities are around the corner which Yu Kane missed the detailed announcement for as he bunked the initial classes. Yuchin thinks it just turns out to be a community gala every time where they have to work as laborers. Xu tells him that this time they are trying to make it more appealing to attract new students and the laborer posts aren't much in number this time. So if someone fails to secure a position as a laborer, He'll perform on stage, destroying his social standing. Yu Chen is interested in what Zhu has up his sleeve to get out of this. Zhu tells him that as long as he follows his lead, they will get a good spot in the festival. But of course, no favor is free of cost these days. Yu Chen offers him one crime. Ex Zhu agrees. The two airheads shake hands, sealing the deal. This a class's homeroom teacher, Ms. Muchen, enters the room ready to make the list of participants for the festival. She hopes that everyone in the class participates while Ax, Yu, and Yu Chen grin at their plans. She starts with the painting competition in which students actually signed up, but the next competition is singing. 
and the moment she mentions it, the whole class starts looking down tensely, avoiding eye contact with her. Yuchen feels a weird flow and feeling around him and asks Karen what this is about. She tells him that there seems to be a miscalculation and she cannot suppress her powers right now. Yuchen is mad at her that she chose the last moment to tell him this. She tells him to rush to an isolated place if he wants to keep his cover. Yuchen raises his hand, telling the teacher he is not feeling well. She asks if he is sure. Yuchen tells her yes and that he is off to the nurse's office. He barely manages to enter the washroom cubicle when he transforms into Ruyo. He tells Karen that she does not seem very trustworthy as even a tiny moment late, he would have got caught in a huge mess. She apologizes to him telling him that the advance release she did in the morning might have created some loopholes, which is why this happened and she will try to make sure no such thing happens again. She then tells him he will have to spend some time as Ruyo till he can turn back. So is he going to stay here? Who would want to stay in a men's washroom for a large amount of time? Thankfully, Yuchen came prepared for any such bad moment. He takes out the girl's uniform from his bag and changes into it. He then walks out of the cubicle only to bump into a guy. Yuchen freaks out as a guy sees Ruyo come out of a guy's washroom. He rushes up the stairs to get away from the situation when Zhu finds her. He mentions the coincidence, but before Yuchen can complete his response, his foot slips and he falls off the stairs. Zhu comes down to his rescue, asking to call the ambulance but Yu Chen tells him that he is fine. Su tells him not to act all tough and that if something happens to Ruoyo, then Yu Shen will kill him. Yu Shen tells him that he is fine and will tell Yu Chen about this. He then hurriedly leaves. Upon receiving a call from Zhu right away, Yu Chen is annoyed at him poking a nose in his business while Su is confused why he declined his call. Yu Chen rests outside on a bench thinking that if accidents like this continue to occur for him, he might end up losing his life. Karen tells him not to overreact, and these are just minor injuries. Yuchin thinks he'll miss his last class too, while Karen nonchalantly mentions that this is why she told him to stick in one place so he does not keep running into trouble. Karen does not seem to understand the trouble she is putting Yuchin into. Karen calls it the cycle of fate while Yuchin calls meeting her the biggest mistake of his life. He wouldn't be suffering this much if he didn't meet her. Yushin then asks why did he feel like he had lost control over his body when he was falling down the stairs. Karen tells him that since they both live in the same body, if he is not conscious, then her conscience can control his body. Since while falling he was absent-minded, she got a chance to control his body for a while. Yushin understands what she said but mentions feeling like being possessed by a ghost. This makes Miss Mess might an arrogant Karen to be offended. She flicks his forehead violently and threatens to kill him for this comparison. Yushin drops the topic and thanks her for saving his life, but he still feels like his bones were affected. Karen tells him not to worry about it as he carries a part of her power within himself that also grants him the ability to heal quickly. Yushin walks into the class tired and wondering what Yusu would have signed him up for. No matter what deal, he can never trust Suk Su completely. Sitting beside Yu Chen, Exu is amused as he is unaware of the hidden talents of Yu Shen. Yu Shen uses a challenging tone to ask what he is implying. Su points at the board for Yu Shen to see for himself. Yu Shen is shocked to see his name on the dance competition list and questions what Xu did. Su tells him not to blame as he willingly participated in this. Yu Shen realizes the situation. Back when he was running to the nurse's office, his teacher asked him if he was sure because she thought he raised his hand to sign up for the dance competition. Yu Chen worries about this misunderstanding while Ex Su enjoys the situation, telling him to accept as this might make him famous. Yu Chen retaliates by threatening Zhu into participating as well. Even before this statement is completed, Su disappears back to his seat. Su suddenly gets to a serious question. He asks Yu Chen what the origin of Ruayo is. This confuses as well as freaks Yuchen out that Exu must have noticed something. He asks Karen if he can wipe someone's memory and she tells him he can but at the cost of some side effects. He asks what the way is expecting it to be a magic trick only to hear her tell him to bang his forehead somewhere to wipe his memory of recent events. The side effect will be Exu being unconscious for three days. Yuchen obviously cannot do that. Zhu brings him back to reality. So he asks what Zhu is talking about. 
Zhu mentions that Ruoyo is not a normal girl as when she was falling down the stairs, she changed her course midair to fall with little damage. Yu Chen sighs knowing it isn't as deep a problem as he thought it'd be. He tells Exu that some issues are better left unsolved. It is to his advantage that he does not get into the depths of the matter. Leaving Zhu confused, Yu Chen walks away thinking he might have to use Karen's suggested matter if things go down. Yu Chen talks to MS and Mu Shen who tells him that the name cannot be withdrawn from the list as it has already gone to the school committee. He asks if he can then just give up from the competition. Mu Chen tells him that it is a fair option but it will be more convenient if he finds someone as a replacement for him. If not, then he can give up. She shows her kind nature by mentioning that it was a mistake on her part, so she will take full responsibility to get him out of it. He then leaves to think about finding a replacement or giving up while Mu Chen tells him to approach her if any queries. As he walks out, Karen asks while royally chilling on his shoulder what he will be doing now since he cannot directly withdraw his name. He tells her he does not have any other option than giving up. Who would want to willingly go up on stage and become a symbol of punishment? Karen thinks about it and flies in front of him, suggesting he goes up to stage as Lin Ruyo. Yu Chen is confused about how that would make anything better. She tells him she can then take over his body and dance in place of him. Yugen is surprised to know she knows about music. A girl walks from the other side of the corridor, so Yu Chen hurriedly grabs Karen and hides her in his coat, offending her at the manhandling. Back in the class, Xu asks how things went and Yu Chen tells him not well. He then jokes around telling Yu Chen to accept fate and that he will help her. Yu Chen suspiciously asks what his help is. Su puts an arm around his shoulder and whispers to him as if sharing something very important, only to tell Yu Chen that he will bring a cheer team to support him. Yu Chen pushes him away, telling him to not bother, but the sudden movement makes him dizzy and he falls off his chair. Su worriedly asks if he is fine, but Yu Chen tells him it must be the after effects of his being sick in the morning. Su offers to take him to the nurse, but Yu Chen convinces him he will manage. Yu Chen exhaustedly walks to an isolated place and asks Karen what that is about. Karen worriedly tells him it has appeared. Yu Chen is shocked at her tense face and asks what happened. Karen tells him that the power of hers sealed within him was attracted to the appearance of the ruins. Yu Chen asks where these ruins are. She tells him she senses it vaguely right now, but it feels like it's from the north. So if they head that way, maybe she can sense the presence more clearly. Yu Shon becomes excited and tells her to start the journey right away so they can solve this problem. Karen glares at him questioning if he's going to go like that unprepared. Yu Chen walks up north as Ruoyo with Karen as they both look around. Karen mentions the atmosphere being a little unstable, so if her hunch is correct, they are at the right place. Yu Chen asks her to dumb it down, do she tells him that the relics are showing signs of emerging, but the ruins have not emerged completely yet. Yu Chen stares at her questioning if this trip was a waste of time, which is not denied by Karen. He then goes on a rant about how much money the taxi there costs him while Karen still seems to be indifferent. She suddenly senses something and the two follow her intuition. They find a portal to the ruins and Karen can sense the spiritual power within. But since it has not emerged completely, they cannot do much right now. The only advantage was that they didn't have to look around for the location once it fully emerged. Karen tells him to head back, but Yushin asks how would they. They seem to have become surrounded by a bunch of wild pigs ready to hunt them down. Karen mentions that the spiritual energy in the atmosphere must have made them go mad, but Yushin is currently concerned more about how to get away. Karen tells him that there is no other option than to fight back right now. Yu Chen starts running. Karen follows, questioning what this is about. He is aware that this will only make the animals more mad, but the two are outnumbered and cannot do anything. Karen, however, is insistent on fighting back and turns towards them. Yu Chen stops to question what is she talking about, only to be shocked at what happens next. Karen casts a magic spell to strike lightning toward them. The raining thunder takes the pigs out all at once. Yu Chen asks her why she wants him to do something when she is this strong. Karen seems a little offended as she explains that she is weak right now and every spell she casts causes power to drain out of her. This will not only affect her but reduce the chances of his transformation to his normal self. If a lot of power is used up, she might fall back to a slumber and that would mean he will have to live like that till God knows when. 
Feeling guilty, Yu Chen drops the topic and tells her they should head back. Seeing the effects of the relic, Karen decides to seal off the spaces around the ruins so no more animals are tainted to madness. She also has to dispose of the bodies. She casts her spells to work on it. As Yushin walks back, he looks worriedly at Karen sleeping in his pocket, thinking she is still using up more energy at the end of the day. Back when she used the spells near the ruins, she passed out right away so is now sleeping. Looking at the time, Yuchin knows that Luoxi must not be home right now so he should go rest in the safe space rather than wander around. As he tries to open the door, someone from behind asks who she is. Yuchen is shocked to see his mom there and his mother questions who this lady is. The mother seems to be looking like Luo Rexi, the same height, dressed up in adult clothes. Yuchen covers the situation by introducing Ruyo and mentioning being there to pick something up on Yuchen's behalf. She jokes about her son making others do stuff for him, but Ruoyo covers that she was in the neighborhood. Yuchen tries to slip away, but his mother drags Ruyo into chit-chat after calling her his son's girlfriend. She asks what Ruoyo would like tea or coffee making Yushin respond. There's only cola in the fridge, forgetting he is playing Ruyo at the moment. He covers up that he needs to get back to school so is in a hurry. Ruyo is served cola while he tries to tell her it is not needed and he needs to get back to school. She tells him to rest a little before doing so and then talks about Yushin just being like his father. He also seems to like making his girlfriend run errands for him. Ruoyo covers it up that he offered it on his own. Ruoyo tries to take his leave. She tells him that Yuchen's room is upstairs, asking if she should show her, but Ruoyo mentions knowing where it is and leaves. What he does not notice is that Karen fell out of his pocket when he was seated. His mother picks it up and has the same reaction as Yuchen did when he first saw her. Questioning, are dolls these days are this realistic? Yuchen sighs in relief in his room and thinks of how his mother dropped by out of nowhere. He then thinks that maybe everyone was informed but him. He tells Karen to be careful about wandering off with her being around. But the moment he pats his pocket, panic resurfaces within him. He wonders where he dropped her but is sure that she was in his pocket when he came back. He then realized she slipped out of his pocket while sitting on the sofa. Yuchen rushes downstairs and finds Karen seated on the sofa by his mother. She asks Ruoyo if the doll belongs to her. Yuchen tells her that it does so his mom tells who she thinks is Ruoyo to take care of such a nice doll. Karen bites his finger as he is taking his leave, refusing to the insistence of his mother to have him stay. As Yuchen walks out, he asks Karen why she did that only to earn her anger. She tells him to be grateful she didn't slap him while questioning the deal of the woman they met. Yuchen tells her it was his mother, surprising her. Yuchen sits on the bench, worried and tired. Karen, currently hanging on his shoulder, asks what he is going to do now as he seems to not have anywhere else to go. Yuchen tells her it's true and asks her when he needs to be Ru Woyo. She responds with three hours. Yuchen is exasperated thinking about what will he do for three hours outside. Karen asks if he does not have anything particular in mind. She might have a way to spend time. Since the spiritual energy of the ruins is affecting the environment, she is not sure what lies within anymore. And as her powers are at a limit at the moment, she cannot use much magic. So she would like to teach Yushin how to use the power of hers that he has within himself so he can protect himself against danger. Yuchin's first query is how hard will it be to learn it? Karen tells him it depends on one's innate talent, and as she chose him as her vessel, he probably has enough talent to not have a hard time learning. Yushin then wonders what a safe place could be for this practice, but Karen tells him not to worry about it. She tells him not to worry about it and relax enough to follow her lead. Yuchin closes his eyes as she casts some magic, and when he opens them, he finds himself in a dreamlike space. Yushin panics at the sudden change of environment. Karen tells him it is a spiritual environment constructed from his mind. It is a state between mind and reality, so whatever happens here will feel like a realistic dream to him. The next worry is the possibility that he will forget what happened in this dream. Karen tells him she will make sure his body remembers it all, even if he tries to forget it. Done with the chat. She tells him to lose all the tension from his body and free his mind so she can take control of his body and demonstrate to him while he feels it with his soul. Yu Ken does as she says and Karen then takes over his body. She then tells him to carefully feel the spiritual power coursing within him. 
and then gathered it all in his fingertips to do a long-range explosion. The power of the explosion depends on how much spiritual energy he gathers and how much he compresses. She then leaves the control and asks if he understood it. Yu Shane seems to have gotten the concept, but he needs to try it too. Karen tells him to feel free to ask questions as this practice will go on till no strength is left in his body. She then tells him the next will be the escape spell, as they might need to escape the ruins any moment due to being unaware of its environment. Yuchin seems to be getting nervous with the mention of strenuous training. Yuchin then takes a running position as Karen takes control again. He then runs at a high speed only to get slammed into a tree. As he sits there having his head throbbing in pain, she apologizes to him asking if he is okay. This turns into a math problem when Yuchin tells her to slam into a tree at 80 kilometers per hour and then measure the damage. He tells her to explain things to him again. Karen apologizes for skipping out on the basic details of spiritual training. Yuchen tells her to forget it and let's try the explosion spell again. Karen tries to stop him, but he already has cast the spell, causing a huge explosion taking the two into effect. Yushin suddenly wakes up on the bench, all panicked. Even though fine, Yushin is shaken up by what happened in their realistic dream. He asks if Karen wants to punish him or something. Karen clarifies that she did try to stop him as gathering the spiritual energy may be a basic skill but patience is needed to do it correctly or else a backlash can be caused. Since he is a human, such an incident would have been fatal for him if it wasn't for the spiritual environment. Yuchin hides in the bushes in front of his house, wondering what to do. Karen asks if there is no way he can go inside, but he either will be going inside as Ruyo or a cross-dressed Yuchin. Both will put him in dangerous situations, so he needs to sneak in at any cost. Having no other option than risk, Yuchin silently opens the door and peeks inside, wondering if his family is home. He walks inside the corridor to hear the voices of his mother and sister in the lounge. They are discussing none other than the boy sneaking into his own house. His mother asks Luo Si if he is usually this late, but he isn't. The conversation then shifts to Ruyo and how her appearance is suspicious for both Luo Sai and her mother. Eavesdropping on the side, Yushin knew it was going to be trouble for Luo Axi to know even the slightest of things. His mother then mentions the delivery arriving anytime soon, while Luo Si mentions waiting for her brother to return for dinner together. The bell rings right away, leaving Yuchin no other chance. The moment his mother turns to the doorway, he disappears with a hoosh. In the room, he sighs in relief, asking Karen if she is fine. Karen is glad that he succeeded in the teleportation spell, but truly it was barely an intermediate level execution. Tired and sad, Karen says she will now suppress her powers and go into a deep slumber so he can become a boy and deal with the situation ahead. Yushin is then sat on inquiry in front of his mother and sister, who question what has been going on with him lately. He questions about his mother dropping by without any message. She mentions telling Zio about it, who avoids eye contact at that. The mother then gets back on the topic, mentioning she never allowed for him to have a girlfriend in secret. He acts pretty well when he makes up a story of things just escalating that way unexpectedly. He tells them that he was once walking outside at night while vibing to his music when he didn't notice a truck coming his way. Ruoyo appeared out of nowhere, saving him from death. After knowing he was okay, she told him not to be so mindless or he'd lose all his life pretty soon. He ends his dramatic story with a the rest of history. His mother is in deep thought and tells him to invite Ruoyo sometime so she can properly thank her. Luo Alaxi also mentions wanting to apologize to her for being rude. Yushin nervously tells them he'll ask when she has time. Yuchin sits worried when Karen asks if he is fine. He's fine right now, but these lies cannot be kept forever and will eventually come out, especially with the upcoming festivals in school. They won't be able to tell when will they be free from there, and this can disrupt the entire timing schedule between Yuchin and Ruoya. Karen sits beside him and tells him that she also has news to add to his list of worries. They can also enter the ruins, but that would be a blow to Yushin. Yushin is surprised that there is such an option too. She tells him that the ruins may not have emerged completely yet, but they are still there as a separate plan of existence. And if he is mentally prepared, he can create his way through it. However, 
It will be a quite memorable experience. Yuchen pats his head telling her to not worry about how he will manage it and just find a way to deal with the situation. The pat results in Karen blushing and pushing his hand away with a warning to not touch him again. Yuchen jokes about her being cold to her war buddy, making her embarrassed. Yuchen prepares as Ruaya leaves for the ruins. He is surprised at how thorough she is when she tells him that they should live at high noon. The sun will make him feel better when he enters the ruins. Karen tells him not to overthink as she doesn't want him to be unable to even move after entering the ruins as this will make the whole situation useless for them. Yuchin then jumps down the window and rushes for the ruins. As they reach near, they are once again attacked by a wild pig. Karen cannot use the same amount of energy again so the two run while the pig chases them. She points out how wild this looks and that it is close to turning into a demon and they need to get rid of it before it happens. Yuchin barely dodges an attack and keeps running mentioning how strong its armor is. Karen asks Yushen to use something of what he learned. He jumps up on a tree branch and then casts a controlled explosion spell at it. It doesn't seem to phase the pig that keeps hitting the tree to make him fall. He then starts running again. Karen mentions him not using enough strength as he needs to use about 30% more strength than what he did to hurt this progressing demon. She then mentions that he obviously cannot control his strength precisely at the moment creating a risk of Yuchen exploding himself. However, Karen is shocked when Yu Chen perfectly calculates how much spiritual energy he needs to gather and accurately casts an explosion spell. Karen cannot believe that he can exhibit such an advanced level of control just with two days of training. This is followed by a huge bomb directed at the pig. Yu Chen looks at the dead monster in surprise, wondering if it is dead or if it will wake up any time. Karen tells him to not waste time fooling around and hurry to cut it open. Yuchen questions why they have to do it since they simply burnt down the previous ones. Karen replies that this one almost became a monster, so it must have a monster core created within its body. That core will help Yuchen increase his skills and cultivation in a faster way. Yuchen takes out the small berry and asks what to do with it. Karen tells him to swallow it, making him shocked that he should swallow this weird thing without cooking it. Karim reminds him that monster essences are a part of the whole monster and they can either swallow it or use alchemy on it to gain from it. So Yuchi only has one option to swallow it. He worriedly asks if he is going to die by eating it, but Karim confirms that there may be side effects, but he will be able to deal with them and not die. Yuchin sits by the tree and prepares to swallow it, leaving his safety to Karen. She ensures him to protect him by all means. As soon as he swallows it, he feels like choking, making Karen motivate him to use his skills and spiritual energy to overpower this monster's aura and control it. After a few moments of struggling and the appearance of energy over Yushen, he faints. He wakes up next to Karen, who congratulates him for finally unlocking his innate cultivation. He can now officially be considered a beginner in it. A tired Yushen asks if this cultivation thing has to do something with immortality, but Karen tells him true immortality does not exist and cultivation is just a way of obtaining power. Getting back to the topic of concern, Karen tells Yushen that this innate cultivation gives him enough power to create his way through the ruins so if he wants, they can try it. Knowing he cannot get away with lying to his mother for long, he decides to deal with this issue as soon as possible. As the two prepare to walk, she warns him that there will be obstacles where she cannot guarantee his absolute safety even with her protection. Yu Shen is ready to bear physical injuries as long as he does not die. Before walking to the ruins, he tells her that after all this is over, she needs to help resolve some of the problems that she caused for him. Karen promises him. As the two stand in front of the entrance, Yu Chen asks if the door is bigger than when they saw it before, but Karen seems to be deeply involved in getting through it as she tells him to not waste time and make sure to stay close to him to avoid getting hurt. Yu Chin hugs her in front of him, asking if he needs to strap her there while she grumpily blushes. As soon as he enters the door, the two are shrunken in. Yu Chin coughs and huffs as he finally enters the realm, asking if this thing is safe for humans to pass through. 
Karen tells him she made the ruins in a separate plane of existence to make it safe from intruders. This is why it is hard to pass through it unscathed, even within her protection. Since everything is going smoothly by now, Karen tells him that he can rest and cultivate for a time so they can bring things to an end. Yu Chen is currently interested in this place. She tells him it is the Butterfly Moon Palace. In some place else, a girl that looks like a human-sized version of Karen but with her clothes and hair white senses the aura of the Butterfly Moon Palace. She thinks of how Princess Yu has been dead for hundreds of years, so the palace should have fallen into void by now. But if it is the palace she senses, she needs to take it back for her. She decides to take a stroll to find it since she doesn't have anything important at hand. Karen and Yushin stare at a wolf from behind a tree as Yuchin asks if this path will let them reach the palace safely. On the other hand, Karen's thoughts are that her wolf has grown too much since she left him. Upon Yukane's confusion, she tells him that the place was too empty, so she brought a bunch of mortal birds and beasts to have them live and grow here. Many have died, but some still seem to remain. Yuchin still wonders if this wolf is vegetarian or not. Karen tells him to go ask personally. Yuchin's focus now goes to the huge palace behind her. The palace is the core of this realm and its depths hold the core of Karen's spiritual energy. A sudden devotion enters Yushin as he prepares to move there with no time to lose. The two fly to the gate tiring Yushin, who isn't used to these powers. He asks if they should enter inside, but Karen stops him. She stares at the gates as even though this used to be her palace at some point, she also does not recall the kind of traps that still lie there. So, the moment they will open the gates, the defense mechanism of the palace will be activated. Karen tells him that she is very confident in the defense mechanisms she built. So, without her help, it will be very difficult to reach the depths of this palace. Now Yuchin is more concerned about his life than getting things done because Karen seems to have made this thing way out of his league. Karen does not seem to understand consolation as her next words state that even if anything happens, she will just use his body and she also has some other areas that she needs to handle alone since his cultivation level stepping foot in those areas means death. Yu Chen is right when he calls for creating more work for herself in her own house. Ar the white-haired girl walks around the street sensing the aura from somewhere near and thinking about inviting some King Yi if she knew wandering in this world would be this annoying. She continues to get stares from others for her beauty and dress when someone approaches her for signing up as an idol. Annoyed, she simply teleports. She is surprised that after all these years, this world seems to have become more noisy, which seems to be the reason she finds King Yi, which we still don't know about, talkative. She thinks if this King Yi had spent more time cultivating, he or she would have entered the Golden Core realm by now. The girl prepares to search the whole city to find the coordinates refusing to believe she cannot find the source of the aura. Half an hour later, she fails to do so. Since she only felt the aura for a little time, she deduces that the palace realm might not have completely emerged yet, which is a good thing since when she finds it, there will not be much of a crowd near it and lesser bloodshed. As she floats on a sword, she throws a frisbee, asking it to find the source of the aura of the palace. The frisbee thing was a treasure compass that would find her the clues that she could not find with her energy. She then decides to stop and head back mentioning some old people not getting to know that she has been wandering around. In the Butterfly Moon Palace, Karen shows Yushin the first defense mechanism. It has five stones that are in perfect balance to each other, and even though they do not carry much of an offensive power, they have a high defensive power. The five stones are the elements of tortoise shell defense that reduce the impact of offense on them. Yuchin is supposed to destroy any one of the stones, so the balance is lost and so is the defense barrier. Excited by this, Yushin steps forward and proceeds to jump in between the stones, easily destroying one of them. Karen tells him it was good enough and since the road ahead is a long one, they should move along now. Yu Chen questions if they couldn't reach the depths of the palace by the time the day ends, can they go back by doing something like saving this progress or would it be lost? This interesting question has an even more interesting answer. Karen tells him that unless she gets her spiritual power back, the portal to other dimensions cannot be reopened. In summary, there is no escape route except for reaching the core of the palace. Why didn't she tell this to Yushen before? Well, he simply didn't ask. 
The two stare dead at each other at this revelation. The white-haired girl sits in a cafe having tea, which she finds good to suppress hunger in this mortal world, but not advantageous for her cultivation. She suddenly receives the compass back and is surprised that it found the realm already. Lady unbothered about this mortal world, opens a portal on between the cafe and leaves for the place the compass mentioned. The waiter seems to have gotten a story no one would believe him about. Reaching the place, she feels like there are traces of battles and wonders if someone came before him. If it's true, then she needs to hurry up on her journey. The area that the compass guided her to certainly has enough spiritual energy to make the judgment legit. She decides to use her power that she knows is enough to tear through space and time and find her origin's source. Her power seems to create an icy track through the forest. The girl stares at the entrance of the realm that she has finally found. She seeks the power of the heavens and the earth to help her enter the realm. She wonders why would Senior Yu leave even a single entrance in the void and commits to taking back the palace no matter what. In the palace, Karen feels something weird as Yukin chooses a sword for himself. She tells him to hurry on their journey, making him question the sudden rush. Karen shares that someone else has entered the realm, and it is almost impossible to find the realm entrance in the void unless it is Saint Realm. Now again, Yu Chen has no idea what these realms are, so he asks her to dumb it down for him. She shares that ten realms are like ranks for people based on their skills and cultivation power. Sacred Saint lies on the seventh highest rank. These people take power from the heavens and earth and to find a gate in void. They need to be well-versed in the laws of space and time. Karen used to be on the ninth highest rank, the Ascension Realm, in her glory days. Concluding the realm summary, she tells him to hurry so they can reach the last floor as soon as possible. The girl lands in the realm surprised at such a strong aura guarding the entrance. But she also seems to be the one who doesn't want to waste any time in taking control of the core of the palace. She is surprised to find a wolf demon in the realm who stands against her. She crosses her arms, warning him to leave her alone so she can spare his life on Senior Yu's behalf. The wolf roars at her earning a bunch of glass spears at him with her magic till it's left wailing. The wolf then walks away traumatized and pained. She then stares at the Butterfly Moon Palace and dramatically asks it to allow her to take over what Senior Yu has left behind for her as she flies toward it. A girl arrives back in the place from where the white-haired girl left, so we should figure it is the King Yi we heard about. Finally, the name of the white-haired intruder is also revealed, King Zhu. King Yi talks to King Zhu about the promise to take her to the Golden Core Realm when she returns only to find her gone. Yu Chen seems to be having a hard time dealing with the lion-like monsters, wishing they could spend some time training rather than risking his life this way. Karen tells him that this is the last trial of this perimeter, and that the spell formation will then cast a monster to appear of the same cultivation level as Yu Chen. Then Yu Chen needs to fight back till the incense burns. If Yu Chen stands alive after that, they will be free to proceed. Yu Chen points out that it seems like Karen is constantly lying to him, but Karen responds with the idea of dropping the chit-chat and proceeding as she senses the intruder closing the distance pretty fast. On the other hand, the intruder Kingji also seems to be in a hurry to find the person who entered before her and kill them. She wants the news of the palace to be kept a secret. Her thoughts are disturbed by a monster sneaking up behind her. It seems to be a multi-headed dragon. She is impressed by the style and planning of Senior Yu and does not want to damage it, but being in a hurry at the moment, she decides to deal with the matter violently and she can restore the things like before once she is done reaching the core. After humbly apologizing, she attacks the dragon only one time to leave it unconscious and then walks away with class while an explosion occurs behind her. Yu Chen sits down to take a breath after they are finally done. Karen tells him that they are a little late and the intruder has come very close, so they are inevitably going to face them. They can only push this person back for now, and since they are close to the spirit's origin, she can restore 70% of her strength, but at a cost. Yushin doesn't let her continue and tells her to go for it. He asks her to take care of the intruder while he can take a little break. Karen mentions him being a little too comfortable with her controlling his body. He doesn't seem to be aware that she can take over his consciousness and steal his body. Yushin tells her he actually isn't scared and trusts her completely since they are partners. Of course, kindness makes this little girl embarrassed, so she stutters and proceeds to go for it. 
With a kiss on his forehead, she takes over his body and picks the sword to deal with whoever enters the realm. After taking control, Karen tells Tuyushin's soul to observe the fight for high cultivation levels as it will be beneficial for him. The minute King Zhu steps into the place, Karen teleports and appears right in front of her. She merely manages to defend herself and is slammed into the wall. Karen then uses her magic to land several attacks on King Zhu. While trying to defend herself, King Zhu tries to comprehend how such a young girl could have such immense power even if she does when she appears in the cultivation world. King Zhu finally stands back and tells Karen she shouldn't have come here. She then teleports and appears right behind Karen, ready to pierce her fierce sword in Karen's head. But her attack only harms thin air as Karen has disappeared. Queen Zhu stands there, amazed at the use of the laws of space. Yuchen wakes up with a jolt questioning where they are. They are in a room where he does not see a normal-sized Karen hanging in chains above. Karen tells him that this is the core of the Butterfly Moon Palace, and even though there were certain hindrances, they still manage to eventually reach here thanks to him. Yuchen asks what to do next, but she tells him the rest is her job so he should relax a little. After this saying, Yuchen faints. With a few magic spells and portals, the chains break as Karen's real body gets freed. King Zhu stands above the core, seeing the light that tells her she is a little late. She does not regret it though, as she means to get what she wants back from who she thinks is the girl version of Yuchen. Yuchen wakes up with his head in the lap of a human-sized Karen, but still in the form of a girl. He feels so tired that his body won't move. Karen tells him it is because all her power within his body has dissipated completely. With a great deal of hesitancy, Yuchen eventually asks her who she is. She introduces herself with her real name Liao, Yu Yu, the owner of this domain and someone he knows as Karen. Yuken understands that part but still feels it a bit unreal. He asks if her powers are back and upon an affirmative response, he reminds her that she said she'll turn him back once she is fine. Karen hesitates in saying she said so, but there seems to be an issue. King Zhu walks back to her realm asking her informant to relay some orders, but they are disturbed by King Ye. She tells the lady to provide appropriate information about this person to earn a heavenly pill as a reward along with a high-grade weapon. If they capture the person and bring her to Qing Zhu, they will get a visit to the brilliant Moon Palace and the title of an elder. King Ye asks who offended her this badly, but she ends up getting an earful about wasting time and is asked to find the person too. She opens the picture to see the girl she once saw in school. King Su is impressed at this smart and talented girl who is hiding herself in the mortal world. King Ye is weirded out by the expressions of King Zhu as she contemplates on the situation. King Zhu then orders her subordinate to handle the school admission procedures in three days. King Ye questions her sudden need to experience the mortal world when she is the lord of the beautiful Moon Palace as well as the deputy leader of the Ten Domain Alliance, along with being in the middle of cultivation to be a sacred saint. King Zhu's arrogance is back as she questions who the one in authority is. King Ye points out she got permission to go because she is in the age of studying. She further warns King Su about the consequences of getting caught by the people of the realm for going undercover. King Su threateningly points out they are the only people who know of it, making King Yi understand she'll be going down with her if she snitches on her. King Yi tries to change the subject from being bullied. King Su sips on her drink, asking King Ye to cooperate with her in understanding what she calls the mortal world. In exchange for finding information on that person, she can have a heavenly pill and a chance to visit the refining hall where she can choose a life-bound spiritual weapon for herself. Quingy agrees in an instant. Karen analyzed Yu Qin's condition as per her expectations, but there was a problem she failed to analyze before. Since both the forms of Yuchin are a part of him, the Ruoyo part has become more dominant in terms of aptitude and strength, creating in a chance of his body being taken over by Ruyo. Yuchin expresses confusion, probably in hopes of his thoughts being wrong, but Karen confirms them by mentioning he might turn into a girl permanently. Yuchin panics, questioning if his hard work went to waste. Karen tries to calm him down, mentioning that the issue is beyond her expectations, but there is still a solution. She tells him that he simply needs to raise his cultivation vase to the revenant realm and cultivate the Dharma of Incarnation. This way Ruyo can be created into a separate individual. 
The term simple in her solution seems contradictory when she mentions it takes at least a hundred years to cultivate to that level. Karen offers her assistance in the process since she caused the problem for him. Yu Chen requests her to complete her statements in one go, as the chunks of revelations are making things harder for him to figure out. Karen simply puts her hand on his chest transferring the spirit origin vessel in his body. It contains the spiritual energy of the level of a high-grade immortal. This will help make the cultivation process faster for him than normal by gradually absorbing the spiritual power. Kitchen questions if it's really fine for him to use what she needs to get back to her original form. Karen once again goes back to her no extra talk mode and tells him she'll transfer as much power as he can absorb. As Yushin faints after a while, Karen sits breathing heavily while hoping this decision proves well for them. Even though she knows that the cultivation world will not be as calm as it seems presently. Yushin sits in his class thinking about the issue he has gotten involved in, but not like he has any chance of back away now. He recalls the last incident in the palace when Karen asked him to take off his shirt so she could add a spiritual mark on him. The mark can help him enter this world when he faces a problem in this world. Moreover, it can create an illusion of him wearing appropriate clothes for whatever form he is in, but this would only be for people of his world and lower than the nascent soul stage. Karen then left asking him to leave before her as she was going to be spending some time there. Yushin worries if she is fine on her own back there, as Yuken tries to walk out in the thoughts. Who else could uselessly intervene in his life other than Ayu Mo? Shu Mo tells him not to sulk if he has been dumped as he can find a new girl with his face. Shu assumes his worried mood is because he got dumped by Ruoyo, so he is taking this chance to mock Yuchen. The two then argue over the cultural festival mishap when Kingi enters the classroom asking for Yuchen. She approaches Yuchen, sweetly handing him a letter and asking him to visit the address written on it. She adds cuteness to her gestures to convince him. But the moment she leaves, every guy is once again on the neck of Yuchen, glaring at him for bagging yet another girl. Zumo asks him to open the letter as his fate depends on what's written on it. Yushin nervously opens the letter that asks him to visit her in the back court of the school since she has some important message for her, and she'll have a hard time if he doesn't come. Zumo is amused that Yushin is capable of achieving what people like him can never. But this capability means being attacked by the boys of his class, who are his friends. Exu Umo tells him he has Yushin cornered this time so he cannot run. Yushan decides to escape from the window after dramatically mentioning this situation won't change their friendship. With that, he jumps off. The principal worriedly asks King Zhu, who sits there in an extravagant costume sipping tea why she chose to transfer to this school out of nowhere. Being a convenient person, she tells him she is just interested, but if he doesn't like the answer, she can come up with something else. Fine with the discussion, he calls Li Mu Chen to introduce her to King Zhu. Li Mu Chen being her teacher means she's transferring to Yu Qin's class. Being the sweet teacher she is, she takes King Zhu to show her around the school. The principal calls some leader of his informing him about being done with the process. He is however worried that the document carrying her information has some issues because all of the information is told to be confidential. Telling the person to not worry or rush the person, the guy ends the call and informs the woman behind him about the job being done. She gives him the nourishing heart pill as a reward and leaves after telling him to not investigate the girl. Yuchin sits outside looking at the letter wondering if it's a love letter. The only love letter he ever got was a prank by his little sister on a valentine's. He guesses there's only one way to find out the reason. Yuchin walks to the mentioned place and looks around questioning why would this person call her if she didn't want to come herself. Kingy pops up behind him telling him that he made it on time, or she would have taught him a lesson. Nobody knows what brings the arrogance in this realm people, but it needs to be toned down. Yuchin gets straight to the point questioning the purpose of the letter. Kingy walks closer to him telling him it is exactly what it looks like. A confession from her to him. She then asks whether he can accept it or does he has a girlfriend who's stopping him from doing so. Yuchin stares at her dumbfounded. Instead of rejecting her advances, Yuchin tells her that he indeed is single. Kingi panics and backs away questioning why isn't he following the script. Looks like she isn't smart enough to create a good plan. 
Warning her to stop messing around like this to save herself and others some trouble, he decides to take his leave. Having her time wasted, Quingye decides to resort to the original way and throws her huge sword in front of Yuchneng, questioning who Lin Ruyo is. Yuchen nervously tells her to avoid violence, but later chooses to warn her to not take him lightly either. She senses the huge amount of aura around him. Their stare down is broken by a voice indirectly telling them to stop. Zumo jumps down the window sassily and stands between them. He dramatically tells Yushin, it's not his fault and the world is a messed up place. Yuken looks at him worriedly while Qingyi glares at him. He wants Qingyi to not fight about it anymore or the situation might turn worse. With the last warning to Yushin, Qingye walks away while dragging her sword along. Yuchen wonders, what's up with Exumo shares his expertise in dating Sim to guide Yuchen about the options he has and how he should react. Yu Chen seems to pity Su Mo for his base of conversation being dating sims. Quing Zhu observes the conversation from above the rooftop. At night, Yu Chen touches his mark asking Yu if she's there, but he gets no response from her. His mom suddenly enters the room sneakily as if a thief making him question her gestures. Her excuse being not wanting to find him, doing something weird makes him question the concept of knocking on the door. She tells Yu Chen she needs to go shopping. Yu Chen agrees to accompany them after asking the whereabouts of Luo Zhu. She seems to have escaped to her room at the idea of shopping. Their mother decides to eat her hidden stash of ice cream as a punishment. Can't decide who the actual adult is among them. Yu Chen's mom worries if he is doing fine lately and tells him he should know some people will support him in every situation. She then vaguely mentions something about her not getting harmed, but before Yu Shen can confirm if she knows anything, she changes the subject to taking a beef hot pot to eat as dinner since she is hungry. Yu Chen is amazed by her ability to jump between opposite topics but sighs in relief that she does not know anything. Yu worries about having to cultivate in the beautiful moon palace again, hoping that the journey won't be difficult and time-consuming. She needs to make some decisions too. Something seems off around and so does it feel to Yu Chen as he sits in the class. His thoughts are cut off by Exumo entering with something he considers big news. Yu Chen tells him if he got caught sneakily taking some pictures or any other crime, then he isn't the one who told on him. Sumo is rather offended at the fact that Yu Chen considers his crime skills weak enough to get caught and warns him not to be so lenient with his words. Yu Mo then tells him about a new transfer student entering their class today. But Yushin doesn't know why this is such huge news for Aksu Mo. There seems to be more information for which Yu Mo asks him to lean in, but before he can tell, the bell rings and Ms. Mushin enters the class. She calls King Zhu in for her introduction. Su Mo is speechless by her beauty while Yu Chen has turned into a stone. Aksu Mo thinks it's because of her beauty, but Yu Chen clearly remembers her from the palace. He curses the realm people for not minding their businesses in their worlds. As the class gushes over King Xu, she is told to sit behind Yu Qin, freaking him out a little. While passing by him, she tells him she'd like to have a chat with him alone after they are free. Yu Xin tries to talk it out in the presence of the public, but it won't be happening. Zumo questions Yu Xin about the number of pretty girls he's been bagging lately, while Yu Qin sits there in fear. King Su didn't feel much spiritual energy from around him, but the fluctuations made a very tiny doubt appear that he might have reached the mountain towards the portal. Even so, she doesn't consider him that strong. Yu Qin huffs while running up the flight of stairs when one of his classmates is standing on top of the staircase. Yu Chen is cursing Zumo for killing him one day when he notices the guy sending a message to his friends about finding the target. He dramatically requests a backup while Yu Chen confidently walks up intimidating the guy about what he's up to. He warns the guy to not complain when he retaliates for cornering him this bad, saying something about letting the sleeping dogs lie. Three hours earlier, everyone surrounded King Zhu's chair the moment the ending bell rang. They kept blabbering at her to get in contact with her while she ignored them. Feels like a repeat of what happened with Lin Ruoyo. Jumo once again enters dramatically and royally asks her to be in his company like his usual flirting. He gets ghosted in real life when King Su gets up and walks up to Yu Chen wanting to talk to him. Seeing him silent, she asks him to meet her at the rooftop and leaves. Yu Chen is a little worried as she seems smarter than King Yi. 
He walks out while the rest of the guys once again plan on punishing him for a girl talking to him. Considering the third time the charm, they are sure that this time they will be teaching Yuchin a pretty good lesson. The class turns towards Zumo for a plan. Yuchin walks up to the rooftop questioning what she wants. Getting straight to the point, she asks for the location of Lin Ruayo, but first Yuchen wants an answer as to who even is. Now King Su is sure that he knows Ruoyo, so she opts for intimidation and threats. She mentions cultivators not being able to harm mortals, but only if they follow the rules. She glares at him closely asking him to not test her patience, and then after a breath of a moment takes out her sword that Yu Chen lost his chance to survive. Meanwhile, Yushon is too weirded out to do anything. As the sword inches closer to Yushin, King Yi blocks him asking King Zhu to not risk their laws. King Zhu is disappointed that King Yi ruined her plans since she thinks mortals blurt out the truth when they face the fear of death. Hearing this Einstein-level logic, Yushen takes back his thought of thinking she is any smarter than King Ji. King Zhu walks up to Yushen apologizing for her crude approach and offering her hand for him to get up. She lastly asks if he doesn't know where she is. Yushen tells her he doesn't know about her whereabouts. She just pops up at school whenever she wants. Believing his words, the two girls leave. Yuchen sighs a breath of relief. Now, all he needs to do is avoid the trouble of appearing as Ruyo to school. Walking back to class, Yuchen is agitated at seeing his fellows ganging up on him yet again. Yushin tries to get them to be a little civil, but they only offer to go easy on him if he accepts his fate since he deceived them and went out with three different girls. Poor logic featuring grade two. Yuchin asks what will be their easy punishment if he accepts it only to get a reply that he'll be burned. The door slams shut with a distant voice telling them goodbye. Since they don't want to leave him free this time, everyone is adamant about getting their hands on Yuchen this time. As Yuchen runs, he seems to be ready to confront Yu Mo as an enemy this time. Yu seems to be facing a lot in the realm. Yu Chen stands on the rooftop holding his mark to transform himself into Ruoyo. He then thinks of not letting Zhu Mo off the hook this time. King Yi is a little frustrated as King Zhu is making her practice cultivation even in the mortal world. King Su thinks she is doing better because the other elders are as easygoing as her. King Yi is suddenly alarmed at sensing something so in King Zhu. They both sensed fluctuations of spiritual energy nearby. King Su decides to go and check, while King Yi is left trying to ask her to wait since she has not mastered the art of void traverse yet. Yu Chen is about to escape as Ruoyo when King Zhu enters the space. He is surprised to see such skills in these realm people. King Zhu passes arrogant remarks making Yu Chen question why even is so adamant about wanting to reach her. Qing Su tells Ruoyo to hand back the Butterfly Moon Palace. Yu Chen chuckles nervously telling her he doesn't have detailed knowledge of the matter so he'll just take a leave. He internally curses the situation for Yu not being here with him. Qing Su is not willing to let Ruoyo go, but her sealing the world magic doesn't work on Ruoyo and Yu Chen uses the portal to skip into the realms. The normal people are surprised at the snowing in June, which is the courtesy of King Ju's spell. Second lands where Yu is, but seems to think he chose the wrong time as Yu is busy fighting something. Even though she is huffing, she still doesn't think it is a big problem and only needs a little time to end this. She asks her wolf to guard Yu Shin while she finishes her business, so all Yu Chen needs to do is wait. King Su sits on the bench, ranting about Ru Yo escaping the void seal into the butterfly moon palace so that next time, she will completely freeze the void to stop her from escaping. King Ji is however worried that Qing Zhu is willing to destroy this school just for the sake of capturing this unknown girl. King Ye asks about the deal of the Butterfly Moon Palace, so King Zhu tells her it belonged to the legend Yu. Yu is famous in the world as the legendary woman whose achievements surpass all other masters in the Reverence Hall. Back then, Yu was on an ascension level when she led the Ten Region Alliance to resist the Outsiders. However, she died during the success of driving away the Outsiders. The beautiful Moon Palace stands where it is thanks to you. King Ye sits beside her now bored with the old stories, so she brings King Su back to the interesting stuff of the present. No, not the Lin Ruyo matter, but the cultural festival. 